Hi, welcome. I'm Nira Berry, health and happiness coach and your host of Happy and Healthy, where we explore and discover all the many things to keep you feeling happy and healthy. And make sure to stay tuned to my good to know segment at the end of each show, where I've always got something really good to share with you. So today, I want you to welcome my guest. Uh, her name is Kay Kahani, and she is going to talk to us all about this amazing, amazing thing that's like really caught the country by storm. It seems like all the millennials are into it, and it's the uh, Con it's the KonMari method of organizing. And I've heard so much about it. Everybody I know is into that, and everybody wants to find out more. And so uh, I'm so excited to have you here today. So thank you so much for being here. Hello and thank you for having me. It's um, really a pleasure to be here and to be able to share Kanmari Kondo's organizing method with you and uh, with your viewers. Thank you. So I just want to say that you're a certified Kanmari organizing consultant and, uh, and you own um, T Tidy Paradise, right? Yes, I'm yeah. among the first actually uh, consultants who, you know, attended the Kanmari uh, tidying training. It oh. was, yes, in New York. So and how long ago was that? That was about three years ago. Wow, so it's really just been a few years and it's it's something that is, uh, I know she that she has a show on Netflix, uh, Marie Kondo, and uh, about tidying up and, and that's been like really popular and uh, I know she's got books and uh, it's it's just amazing. So uh, I'm really excited to, to find out more about it. So um, I, I know that it's a, um, it's, it's a Japanese art of decluttering and organizing. Like, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, sure. Um, it's uh, the main difference uh, between the KonMari's um, organizational method, I would say, because I say method because I have tried so many other organizational process, but uh, after some times I reverted back to the same um, clutter or mess that I had in my life. So. Uh, once I really decided uh, that enough is enough, I have to look for something that really works. So in search of a method that works, I actually encountered uh, Conmary in her bestseller book of The Life-Changing Magic of uh, Tidying. And uh, so I saw this book and I realized that the book was among the bestseller uh, by New York Times in 2015. And I said, oh, I have to read this book. <laughs> so I uh, got the book, I read the book. It really made sense to me. It was, the, there was a method, there was a very practical method to it. And uh, I decided that uh, this really is going to work for me. So. The uh, method is a little bit different from other uh, organizational process because it suggests that you organize by category rather than room by room, location by location. And the cat there are five categories. The categories uh, are from easy to hard. Clothing, and then you move to books. Uh, paper category, then you organize all the other categories which is uh, includes in miscellaneous, kitchen, basement, garage, any other thing that doesn't uh, you know, fall into the other categories that I named. And the last but not least, which is very difficult, is the sentimental items. That's the category that most people have a little bit of a difficulty because normally the sentimental items or associated with a place or a person, the memories that you have with a, from a place or a person or an event in the past, so it's too hard to let go. So yeah, in, I know that I that I have an issue with that. Yeah, <laughs> all the sentimental things. So this is, these are the these are the uh, categories. So this is one difference. The second main difference is that. In Conmary's tidying method, she really, you don't, going through the process, you don't um, emphasize on getting rid of things, but actually keeping things that spark joy for you. 
and uh, through the process you so hold. So I've heard that term. So yeah. so can, can you define what that is? And in, in, you know, sparking joy. Yeah, like uh, oh. like in her in her <laughs> world. You know, in that yeah. world of in her world, and also you know when you go through the process, it actually becomes part of your life. Uh, so she suggests that you hold each item, whether it's a book or a piece of clothing, in your hand, and you ask yourself, um, does it spark joy? So, and often people ask, what does that mean, yeah. sparking joy? <laughs> so whatever you like, whatever you love, whatever you enjoy using, that's the spark joy. And often, by, um, uh, you know, I'm asked this question by my clients that they say, can you explain spark joy? I still don't understand it. Yeah. So I normally start uh, by kind of giving them this experience of spark joy. Since we start with the clothing category, I ask them to hold one piece of clothing that's their favorite, the most favorite, oh. the one that they love. They love the color, then they put it on, they enjoy it. And you can so see them smiling. They yeah. hold that piece of clothing <laughs> in their hand, and I can see them as yeah. you uh, So it brings them happiness, yeah. Exactly, so they smile, and it feels good. They feel light and happy. And I say, this is the benchmark. This is yeah. what spark joy, you know, feels like. So from that point on, they already have a benchmark. Yeah. Anything else that they pick up and examine for whether it sparks joy or not, you know, they already know it because they already have yeah. experienced that right at the beginning of the process. Yeah. Well, that's so good that you define that because... Uh, you know, some people that are watching may not understand that or, you know, so I think that's, that's, that's key. I'm really glad that you explained that, you know, because uh, I can look at five things and they can all bring me joy. But, yeah. uh, but, but I guess you, you think like, oh, what, what is the one that really makes really. you feel wonderful? Exactly. Yeah. So the, uh, so the focus is on keeping things that spark joy and not necessarily getting rid of things. So that's the other uh, main difference with the other organizational process. And um, also, Conmary suggests that you uh, organize each category in one sitting, which mm -hmm. means when you're organizing your clothes, you need to, uh, you need a big clean sheet to put it, you know, uh, empty space and bring all your clothes. Just, just dump it all everything, out. Everything, <laughs> dump it there. Just make like a big mountain. <laughs> exactly. And you, you may have seen the pictures of, you know, big mess. So they, you bring everything from the basement, from all the closets, yeah. everything, and uh, place it there and organize in one sitting. It probably it feels overwhelming, I imagine, that when uh, people bring in all, like, clothes that they have in different parts of their their place, whether or not it's a house or maybe some people have things in their attic or wherever, or the things that they exactly. haven't seen in many years even. And then exactly. they bring it out and they put it in a big pile. It probably seems like, wow, like they probably didn't even realize they had so much. Yeah. So and a lot of it's probably so redundant, like a lot of duplicates of things. And, yeah. yeah. So that's the, one of the uh, main reasons that she wants you to do this. You start, you first, you know, you may get overwhelmed, but you also start from a place of abundance. Because uh, you, Abundance? Abundance, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you so feel you like, see, wow, you have so much. Yeah. You, you have 10, for example, shirts of the same kind, even maybe sometimes the same color. So it makes it easier for you to decide. Uh, which sparks joy to keep and which one to let go. But the main difference, I would say, it's, uh, and um, all my clients have experienced this, the main difference with the other methods is that going through the process, so many times you ask this question, does this spark joy? Does this spark joy? So you really are going through a self-discovery journey. You um, learn so much about yourself and what you like and what your dislikes uh, are. At the end, it really turns, it's a transformation to a new lifestyle. Wow. So this, uh, so this is why people are so moved by it and it's become exactly. a whole movement because yeah. it's not just like, oh, you know, A, B, C, D, and E. As you're doing it, you're actually, you know, bringing out all your, you know, your past uh, thoughts about yourself, maybe even witness the changes, even exactly. in the different styles that you have, I imagine, and 
Really, it's a process of self-growth. That's that's amazing. It, it's a behavior of change. Yeah. So at the end, you really, uh, I would say that it impacts your decision making. Mm. In, in it impacts, um, you know, all the other aspects of your life because you it becomes the part of you that. Any decision you want to make, anything you want to purchase, you ask yourself, does this spark joy? Yeah. And it impacts your relationships. That's your what interact. I've heard. I've heard that <laughs> you know couples that, that go through this process together, that it brings them a, a, not just a certain closeness, but a greater understanding of each other. Exactly. Because they understand, um, from what I've read, that... Uh, that uh, they'll see like what what is really important to this person exactly. that maybe they never communicated in another way so that's uh that's, that's really beautiful uh, i i just wanted just to go over like what what are some of the reasons why you know besides all these wonderful reasons why you've just explained why somebody would want to do that i mean what what is what what is the downsides um downside of not organizing and not decluttering because i know that yeah. there's a, a a lot of uh stress involved that, that comes from it, right? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, you know, when you have a clutter, it's, I think that, uh, you know, everybody identifies with different issues and problems that uh, clutter uh, brings to, your, to our life. One is, uh, you know, waste of time and energy. You know, I'm sure that I am so many of my clients, and it also happened to me too, that because of the clutter and not really having a place for every item in my life, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting ready to go out, you can't find things. Yeah. You can find for a, you know, a particular shirt that you know you know you have it, but I can't, you can't find it. You, yeah. know where, you don't know where it is. Maybe it is at the dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I know, I know something that, that happens to you all the time. I'm not going to mention names here, but I know something that happens all the time, and then they start blaming other people, like, oh, somebody put this in the wrong place, or, you know, and it's, it's just uh, disorganization. Yeah. So you actually immediately, you mentioned something very very important. So when you can't find something, you actually impact your relationship with yourself because it creates some stress and with others because you are looking for someone to blame. Yeah. So right there and then. <laughs> Which is not a good thing. And exactly. I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> yeah. So it actually is inefficiency, um, you know, because you constantly are looking for something. You want to leave the house. You don't know where you left your car key. You don't know where you left your house key. You start looking for, you know, your keys, your sunglasses, your reading glasses, your, you know, uh, metro card. So I think that uh, this is one of the one of the reasons you want to get um, organized to really designate a home for every item that you have. So you, when you're, you need something and it, at any particular time, you can go to the home for that item and pick it up and use it right away. You don't have to go and buy duplicates. So that's another, um, you know, kind of, it really impacts your finances because so many people, uh, I, I read actually somewhere that close to 20% of, uh, you know, uh, our budget, our income is spent on buying duplicates. Wow, that Things. they didn't know that they, need, they, they had already. Yes. So, you know, so let's talk more about that. Uh, we're just going to take a short break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to continue uh, learning all about this uh, wonderful KonMari method. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. The odds of this boy achieving his dream in fashion one in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Hi, I'm Nira Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy, and welcome back. We're still continuing to speak with Kay Kahani, and we're going to uh, speak about the KonMari method of organizing. And so I want to just ask you, Kay, uh, what are some questions we should ask ourselves to see if maybe you know, we should do it or not? Uh, <laughs> 
actually, I don't think that it's, it's uh, I believe that everybody can um, do a little bit of tidying. I mean, even very organized or semi-organized mm -hmm. people, they, they still can benefit from, I would say, from KonMari method of tidying. Yeah. Because in KonMari method of tidying, because you are actually organizing by category and you're designating a home for every item, in general, makes simplifies your life, mm -hmm. which means um, you'll be able to find anything you're looking for, whether it's a piece of paper, a document, yeah. a record, or clothing, or any item in the garage or basement within few minutes, two, three minutes. Yeah. And so that's the advantage of it. So I would say that um, uh, you can, and everybody can use KonMari tidying yeah. method, but how to prepare for it maybe. Okay. Um, I would say that envision your, t your, your tidy space. Mm -hmm. What it is that, you know, you can create a picture, image in your mind. You can sit down and close your eyes maybe mm -hmm. and envision um, how you like your house, your space, or even your office. Tiding, economy tiding is not only for residential places. Even for your office, envision how you like your mm -hmm. space look like. Once you have that image in mind, then you can actually commit yourself to start the process. Why should you envision this and have this image in mind? Because the process can sometimes get overwhelming. Mm. And if you have this uh, image in mind, it, it motivates you not only to start, but continue, so carry on to complete it. So it's a, it's a goal that you have. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, this is the most important part of it, to envision your tidy life and then commit yourself to uh, start and finish the process. As I said, the process may and could get a little bit overwhelming. So it's really important to uh, constantly remind yourself of the benefits yeah. of tidying. And, and also, uh, you sh should you give yourself like a deadline, you know, because uh, I can see somebody starting and then they get busy with life. And then, you know, like if you do this, like, uh, should you give yourself a deadline, you know, to, to do it? Okay, yes, I'm going to do I'm this so, like in yeah. one weekend or? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, it's definitely the process takes much longer than a weekend because you're dealing with five categories. But treat the process, the tidying process, mm -hmm. like a project. I'm not saying set, you know, deadline, but, you know, having a particular timeline mm -hmm. and a roadmap is important. Okay. Because sometimes in between you may travel and not, uh, you know, get a chance to start with the net, next category. So give yourself, you know, be flexible, mm -hmm. be kind so to schedule yourself. Schedule the time for yourself. But schedule the time and maybe set a, a practical timeline to complete the process. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you complete all five categories. That's when you benefit the most okay. from the process. Okay, so we'll get into that. Uh, but just before you get into all the different categories and everything, um, I, you know, I know that you need to also kind of like prep for it, right? Like, uh, don't you need like certain containers and certain things like that? Because I, yeah. I've seen people like in line, like, uh, you know, when, you know, the Netflix show came out, I went to, I remember going to Bed Bath & Beyond <laughs> and seeing all these people standing in line with all these different containers and all these different things, you know, and I knew like, oh, I know what they're up to, you know? Yes, yes. Well, Conmary doesn't necessarily uh, suggest that you go and buy more stuff mm -hmm. right, to yeah. get right. organized. So that's not really necessary. But what, what should you have to... on hand, though? Yeah. yeah, I think it's really important to, that's, that's, the, that's why I said uh, envision your mm -hmm. tidy life. Because you may actually, currently you may not have a particular chest or drawer or mm. storage place for the clothes that you have mm. and how you like to organize your clothes or your kitchen items. So it's really important to envision and take note of the things that you need, mm -hmm. whether you need to buy a new dresser to get more organized because you don't have a proper closet or walk-in closet mm -hmm. to store your clothes, or whether you need to buy, you know, uh, simple little, uh, 
uh, containers, like plastic a shoe box. containers, yeah. or just use the shoe boxes that you have yeah. at home. So any one of these could actually be used as, um, you know, your, and your storage and it's good area. for recycling, you know, exactly. have a second life for those boxes. So you yeah. can prepare, you know, ahead of time, once you envision your tidy life and you need, you know, what type of storage area mm -hmm. you need, you can purchase, you know, or use the shoe boxes or purchase very simple, you know, organiz organizing mm -hmm. uh, containers, things like that, for, like this, mm -hmm. for example, to organize inside your drawers, uh, you know, the knickknacks that you have at home. Yeah. It helps a lot. Okay, uh, so, so let's, let's talk about, like, what, what it is exactly. Let's, um, look, what are the things that we, we should know about it and, and how it works? So um, let's get into the meat of it. <laughs> to the meat of it. Uh, uh, you start, if there are five categories, clothing, books, paper, and uh, miscellaneous item, the last one is sentimental item. So I give you an example for it actually applies to all the categories, but let's say you start with the clothing category, bring a big sheet and bring, you, do, you can do this either on your bed mm -hmm. or in an empty room and bring all your clothes, everything in the mm -hmm. attic, in the basement, in the garage, in the containers, in all your drawers or and walk-in closet and closet. Bring and stack everything. And first, so there are two steps. First sort and then store. So during the sorting, you just pick up one, each item one at a time and ask yourself, does it spark mm -hmm. joy? You keep it, uh, set it aside for later to organize mm -hmm. it. Or if you are getting help from a Conmary certified consultant such as myself, while you're going through the sorting, then I organize mm -hmm. it for you in the closet or in your drawer. And once, and then the, whatever doesn't spark joy, you show gratitude, you thank that item and you dispose of it properly. Either you donate it to your charity of choice mm -hmm. or you uh, recycle it properly. It's really important to recycle uh, our resources properly. And um, one thing that I was expecting, maybe you ask me, showing gratitude, because that's the question I'm asked yeah. oftentimes. What does it mean to show gratitude towards an object? You know, when you're giving your clothes away, why yeah. should you show gratitude? I, I, I guess <laughs> in, in my world, that's, I talk about gratitude a lot as a happiness coach. So um, I, I, um, I so that you gra actually, you gratitude know for what? everything is, Gra is Showing key. gratitude for everything. This is the, one of the best practices that you yeah. can, you have the opportunity to show, to practice showing gratitude yeah. because as you know, you mentioned, you know, those people, you know, with uh, thoughts of gratitude, they're very happy people. Yeah. So this is the best time to practice that. Yeah, I, I can see that working because um, I, I find that uh, sometimes it's hard to get rid of an item. Um, but if you kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, you served the purpose for me, maybe now somebody else can benefit from it. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it, not, so it makes it a little easier to like separate from it. <laughs> yeah. It served the purpose yeah. or maybe not. Maybe you received a gift from someone that, uh, that someone by giving you the mm -hmm. gift showed, you know, love and caring, yeah. but you really don't enjoy wearing, let's say, a, a shirt that sure. you know, was given to you as a gift. So it's sitting in the closet. It's by giving it away and thanking it, you actually show a gratitude. And it makes you happy that's going to go to sure. somebody else and make somebody else happy. OK, so yeah. just tell us like the very most important points. We just have a few minutes left. So um, oh, so okay. what, what uh, so the clothing and the books and um, papers and uh, miscellaneous items and then sentimental items. So once you're done with sorting and all the things that have to go, you, to, you let go, you uh, send them away, then you start organizing by category. Mm -hmm. For example, all your short sleeve dresses, you organize them next to each other. 
and then all your uh, dress shares, mm -hmm. all your pants, all your uh, So you skirts. do the same with the books and same the, with the, the, the papers. Same with the books and the papers. And, uh, so of course there are some you know, uh, details into organizing each category. That's why Conmari has trained so many yeah. consultants to help people get organized. Yeah. And I know the kitchen is a whole nother um, topic, right? It's, as far as... But the same, actually, the same process applies to mm -hmm. kitchens. So you need to bring out all your pots and pans and, you know, utensils. Yeah. And, and look at the duplicates as well. Exactly. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to reach you, um, can you give us your website information? Oh, so, sure. Um, is tidyparadise.com. Okay. And um, should I mention the phone number? I oh, will. We'll have it up on the screen. <laughs> oh, okay. so. so my name is Kay at yeah. tidyparadise.com, and the website is tidyparadise.com. Or, and also yeah. on the so on, yes. So I just wanted to ask you, if you could give us, because we just have a minute left out, what is the uh, one pearl of wisdom that you think that you can share with us, so, or something that you do every day? Yes. Yeah. I, I may not do it necessarily every day during the day, but one thing that I do uh, every night before going to bed uh, is to send everything that I use that day to send it home. As I said, going through the KonMari tidying process, you designate a home for every item, every uh, um, item of your belongings. So every night before going to bed, I make sure I send everything home. Okay, so everything has a place. Yes. Yes. Okay, I love that. So thank you so much for being my guest today, and you've really given us a lot of really good information, and thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. So um, I'm Nira Berry, your host of Happy and Healthy, so stay tuned for our next segment of What's Good to Know. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Nira Berry, the Happiness Coach and your host of Happy and Healthy. And today I'm going to speak to you about mental clutter and getting rid of it. You know, to be successful in life, in business, and in your work life, and your personal life, you know, it helps if you can really think straight, right? And very often we're just overstimulated. We're doing so many things at the same time. It's wonderful to multitask, but to be sending out emails while you're having a conversation with somebody or while you're eating dinner you know that can be overwhelming for your brain and and that really can cause a lot of stress and you know and a lot of stress can cause illness and so I think that's a really good reason to just kind of clear out all that mental clutter <laughs> so one of my tips is to make a list make a to-do list put down things that you need to do on a schedule even send yourself a reminder with your cell phone you know nowadays it's so easy to do that and just make a list before you go to sleep at night that way the next day you wake up and you're free and clear to just think about anything else and you and you know ahead of time what you need to do and you can have a goal of what you want to do the, the rest of the day or even for your life. And, you know, clutter can be a lot of different things. And it really helps if you get rid of uh, many things in your life, such as maybe limiting the time you spend watching TV or social media. Um, maybe don't spend so much time with regrets. You know, going through that would have, should have, could have in your brain doesn't, doesn't serve you in any way. So just figure that, you know, today is going to be your best day. And, and, it's, and it's good enough. You know, the, 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 this is good enough is really the, the new perfect. <laughs> So, uh, so, so set realistic goals and remember that whatever you do, it's going to be your best day and tomorrow is a whole nother chance to redo another day. So I hope you have a happy day. I'm Nira Berry, the happiness coach, and you can reach me at info at com. And you've been watching Happy and Healthy. I'm Nira Berry, your host, and have a happy day. Mm -hmm.